got in the water and uh, <clears throat> made my way over to the Clotilda. And we had a buoy on the bow, and so I, I, uh, we went down the the bow, down the buoy line, and got to the bow, and I could only feel the Clotilda. I couldn't see it, and so when I got up close, real close, you know, I could actually see it about an inch from my face. And so I started feeling, feeling my way, felt the bow, and I felt the planking that was some sharp edges where some had broken off. And so I was just feeling my way inch by inch, inch by inch, and just sensing the vessel. And I was looking for that bulkhead that I mentioned earlier. The bulkhead is like a wall into the ship that separates the compartments of the ship. And that first bulkhead was the cargo hole where the 110 was was uh, kept captured for the two and a half month journey across the Atlantic. So as I was feeling my way, I came to that bulkhead. And I said, wow, this is it. This is where they were in prison for those two and a half months. And I said, do I want to go in? I said, yes, I have to go in. And so I grabbed Hope to the gun wall. That's the wall, the side walls of the vessel. And I did a couple of kicks and went over to the side into the hole. Once I got into the hole, I began tumbling. And I, 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 mean, I got over 1,400 dives, and I'm, I'm a bit proficient in diving, right? But I was just tumbling. And uh, I, I gained my composure. And once I got stabilized, Jeremy, I felt this embraced. I felt this embrace and said, like, you OK? <laughs> You're OK. And so I began to uh, feel around and interrogate. And the, the floor of the hole has been removed. It's gone. But the supports are still there. And we knew that from some of the sonar images that we've taken. We can see those posts. And so I just was feeling around those posts. And as I was feeling around, I, you know, I probably touched something with my fins, but it felt like something tugged on my fins. And uh, I said, okay, I'm just going to let it be and, and embrace whatever happens. And uh, uh, as I was feeling around, and there's a lot of sediment in the hole as well. And so I was reaching down in the hole, trying to at least reach to the bottom. But I was unable to reach the bottom. It's, again, it's at a slant, so the top part is exposed. The bottom part has a lot of sediment in it. So I was reaching around, feeling around in sediment. I did feel a little rod, a metal piece that was in the hole. Uh, it might have been something of significance, but I, we didn't want to bring it up at the time. So we let, left it there. And I just began it to just fill around the hole, uh, uh, as it were. And it got uh, uh, to a point where I think I need to let this place be. Yeah, the sacredness of this place, and I decided to come up. And so when I got up and broke the surface, I just had to wait for a moment and uh, take some deep breaths and, and recompose myself. So it was an incredible experience, to say the least. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, nothing like that exists anywhere else in the historical record, where you actually have the actual hole, cargo hole, where our ancestors was kept. And it was just honor and a privilege and humbling to uh, to go through that experience. Oh, man. And to do it for you guys, you know, you know, to direct the sentence uh, and to be able to, to help you all tell the story. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Oh man, powerful, powerful, 